So I am skeptical of this situation. I think there's little bits and pieces of things that don't really make sense. But when you start to theory craft, when you take it into a bigger direction, a bigger idea, just maybe it starts to make a little bit more sense. That there may be intent or purpose, even an idea behind all of this madness. Firstly, I want to apologize for the lack of videos. I missed out on Kagurabachi and another one I was going to do. I haven't been feeling all too well mentally. I just took a little break and I'm starting to feel a little bit better. Hopefully I can get back into the swing of things. So thank you for your patience. What do I mean when I say that I'm skeptical? How does that even work? in a situation like this. Well, originally, I think a lot of people underestimate Chainsaw Man. They underestimate Hero of Hell, how powerful he is, how strong he can get, how fast he is. There's really no way to determine if you could even be a threat to him. I would like to think that public safety know this, that they wouldn't underestimate him. But then again, it is difficult to tell. Their motives border on two different ideas. One side, they underestimate him. Simple as that, and it's delusional at its best. The other side is purposeful, that they're playing ignorant on purpose, trying to bait and lure Chainsaw Man into this situation, a sense of false confidence, so to speak. You're probably wondering what would be the purpose of that. If it's not straight up ignorance or denial, why would they purposefully sacrifice and mislead Chainsaw Man? Very good question. That's what I'm still trying to figure out. Public safety are being very experimental here. We know that they have three groups for this situation and it has been set up very meticulously. There's a lot of cameras, there's a lot of people in communication. It is a very detailed operation. Now the special division that was introduced to me seemed like a bait. Maybe they didn't expect to go out so quickly, but I do think they were getting sent to their deaths and their purpose wasn't to fight Chainsaw Man, but to die by his hand. One of them tries to react and manages to move in time, but still gets killed. But immediately after that happens, we get confirmation of the operation starting and a bomb goes off underneath where Chainsaw Man is standing, right on top of that building where everyone just died. So already, you tell me very early on, why would they plan an explosive there? Why would they start the operation after all those people just got killed? The answer for me is that they're being used as bait. Now they counter on top of it pretty heavily right after, but not in the way that you would think. Remember, they're not trying to kill Chainsaw Man. They don't even know if they can, but they're trying to subdue him. They're trying to detain him in this location, however way that they can. So the people above that just got slaughtered, we didn't really know their abilities, but none of them look like they had the potential to detain Chainsaw Man. So it's funny to me that the next people that attack Chainsaw Man are parasitic, poisonous, stuff that could potentially slow Chainsaw Man down. They do make him bleed, and I think maybe that was their intention, to try and paralyze him, put him in a coma, poison him, whatever it may be. All of these insects jump on top of him, but he kills them as well. Even the person commencing the operation also also get killed and you think well okay that was a failure as well but maybe not so much as you think maybe this too is also part of the plan sure they're rattling out different ideas and different possibilities but maybe the biggest one is that if they can force or lure chainsaw man into erasing things that are problematic for himself maybe try to overload him with things that he can erase maybe try to get him to throw something up even that could be a worthwhile goal I mention this because immediately after, he goes to erase one of the first devils he killed, which was the ear devil. Now they're watching this all unfold on cameras. They're monitoring this heavily. And there's a very, very good chance that every person that he has killed so far has been purposefully chosen and purposefully put in the position in hopes that Chainsaw Man will erase them from existence. I like this idea. I like how they're trying to go against what fundamentally is possible by using Chainsaw Man's abilities against him. Would this even affect Chainsaw Man? We don't really know. But if they're able to do enough and get certain things that could affect him, that is the only chance that they have. This has kind of changed my perception of public safety. That maybe that they have genuinely planned all of this to happen, to send all of these people to the slaughter, knowing what they're going up against, because they just know that they won't be able to overpower or overspeed what Chainsaw Man is. They have been specifically told to not try and kill him, but to 
detain him, to slow him down, to keep him here? And that's a very, very peculiar question or motive to actually have for someone like Chainsaw Man. But it only makes sense if they understand or already know that they don't stand a chance. So who are they buying time for? I mentioned this previously, but I'm still sold on the idea. Fami is probably the only person that we don't know where she is. She wasn't in the previous chapter when Denji transformed, she disappeared. And she's the only one that can spawn in something strong enough to even compete with Chainsaw Man, most likely a primal fear. Here's the biggest kicker out of all of it. How do you spawn in a primal fear? What we know currently is either a give take system or a mass sacrifice. Right now, a lot of people are getting killed and I can see this being the calling for Fami to actually spawn in her primal fear. But why? Well, Fami wants control of Chainsaw Man. She wants control of Hero of Hell and she is the only person that can kind of do it. And I also mentioned this idea as well prior that there is two people currently that have the possibility of controlling Chainsaw Man, bringing him back to his senses, or at least taking part of control of him. And that is Fami and Asa. But the way they go about it is entirely different. Fami needs to starve Chainsaw Man. So trying to keep him in a location for a long period of time where he can't escape would be absolutely perfect for her. Asa, on the other hand, is based entirely around guilt. But there is an anomaly for both of them, we don't know if it's possible. Someone as strong and as powerful as Control, being Makima, could not take control of Denji. She couldn't do it. It's going to be incredibly difficult for someone like Fami and Asa, but they have different leverages and different approaches. One of them will probably work. Potentially both of them could work. Now I'm very interested to see where we go from here because to end off the chapter with ears now being erased from existence, no one can really hear anything. Katana Man rocks up as well, it's kind of funny, and then a nice panel of war smirking. I am curious because as much as I would love to see her take on Chainsaw Man or try and do something, I don't know how useful she would be. Now that Katana Man is here, we're moving to a pretty interesting scenario where, potentially, just hear me out, Asa might be able to wield Katana Man, which I think would be hilarious if she turns him into the actual sword and he's still inside of it and they can kind of work together. Is it enough? No, but it might be a good time to sort out War's arsenal her weaponry, what she can and can't actually do. Also, getting rid of ears is kind of a, a funny thing narratively, because how do you continue to tell the story when no one can actually hear anything? So most likely in the next handful of chapters, that's going to be thrown up. And it makes more sense that it would happen because of war. War is the person that brought that idea forward. Right at the beginning of the story, we found out it may actually be possible. So if that is the case, you link it back to her and it makes the most sense. What else could you get from Chainsaw Man throwing up stuff? I don't know. A lot of things have probably been erased. A lot of stuff that comes with identity as well. People are still trying to figure out what Chainsaw Man is, what Pochita is. There's been a lot of recent talk for that. I plan to make a full separate video going more into detail, but a lot of people are very set on the birth, rebirth, some sort of embryo birth devil. And I like the idea. Fun fact, it's actually been in the community since the beginning of the story. Very early on, I remember hearing about the idea, but it was so difficult to make it work coherently. Over the years, it has made a lot more sense with the general motif and symbolism of the story. This was an interesting chapter, the start of a lot of great things. I'm excited to see what Fujimura does with Chainsaw Man, with Asa, with Katana Man even. Hopefully we get some more information and clarity in the next couple of weeks, but also we got the newest volume cover. I like it. There's a lot of symbolic gesture to Naita being on a cover, especially in an open field away from all the claustrophobic symbolism of the city that incorporates in the Chainsaw Man. If you were to elaborate on that further, it doesn't look all too good for Nayata, but there is hope. You don't have to take it too literal for volume covers. They are interpretive. They are artistically designed and not all the time represent what's actually happening in the story. That makes sense. But to put it like this, the cityscape and construction being very gross, claustrophobic, encroaching onto the characters themselves isn't a good thing. It's meant to be seen as very problematic, very bad, very closeted, right? Denji's trauma, for example, is within the heart of a lot of that claustrophobia and cityscape. A lot of characters leaving it, unfortunately, are seen as being freed, that they have died or have gone on to a better place. This picture, 
for example, is really good. But to tie it together nicely, city mouse, country mouse. I'm sure a lot of you remember that saying, this all kind of wraps it together nicely. Again, not in the nicest way possible when it comes to Nayita being alive or dead, because that would mean she's gone on to a better place. Fingers crossed though, I still think she's very much alive, just being utilized or weaponized for this situation. The key to everything is Nayuta. Maybe there's the best chance Asa currently has to try and even get close to what Chainsaw Man is.